Hi, welcome back. It's been a long time since I did any videos and I hope everyone's keeping safe and well. This time around I thought I'd do some videos on Greek comedy. Um, I'm teaching the Greek theatre module at the moment and I think that some of the students would really benefit from revision videos and I'm sure that other students are in the same position too. Greek comedy in lots of ways is a lot harder to understand than Greek tragedy because so many of the references that we see in Greek comedy are to contemporary culture, so political events, um, inside jokes, things that you really need to be, not just Greek but Athenian to know. First of all I'm going to really focus on Aristophanes' frogs in the series because that's the most popular comedy that tends to be studied and it gives us a really good insight, does frogs, into the ways that comedies would make fun of tragedy in the 5th century. So here are a few of the challenges with trying to get to know Aristophanes, the major comedian from Greece that we're all familiar with, or not familiar with as the case may be. Aristophanes is the person from whom we get the most material, basically. Um, he's quite early, he's 5th century, and he would have been writing his comedies at roughly the same time as, say, Sophocles or Euripides, so there's an overlap in careers there. Aristophanes' comedies mainly focus on the everyday, and that's something we see in Greek comedy. Unlike tragedy, Greek comedy focuses on an everyday set of characters, even if something ridiculous happens. So, on occasions where a bit of myth creeps into comedy, it's usually a side reference or a character, and there are no surviving comedies from the Greek world with a mythological plotline. That's not because they didn't exist, it's because they don't survive, and they were popular a bit later on in, say, like the 4th century, so about 100 years after Aristophanes was writing himself. Now, Aristophanes included a lot of tragedians in his comedies, but this is sometimes really difficult material for students to access, and one of the main reasons is we don't really experience comedy now the way that comedy was delivered then. So there's a lot of slapstick humour in Athenian comedy. We can see on the vase paintings, for example, everyone would wear masks, they would be really caricatured, everyone would be wearing a fat suit with a swinging phallus at the bottom. And so there's a lot of potential for slapstick humour um, and these costumes kind of bumbling or swinging around. The other reason that Athenian comedy can seem really remote is because we don't watch that kind of comedy on stage anymore. So it's really unusual to watch a kind of um, sitcom comedy unfold on stage. We're used to going to see a comedian live and seeing a stand-up. It isn't quite the same as Aristophanes' comedies. The closest we get to that would be in something called the Parabasis, where the chorus would come forward and make a lot of jokes about current events of the day. So for analogies, you're really looking at British comedy, and that's something that my students at least are less familiar with. Most students now, I think, at A-level and undergraduate level, watching American comedies, and actually it's some of the more traditional British comedies that get us a little bit closer to Athens. So thinking about, say, the theme of double acts and thinking about Rodney Trotter and Derek Trotter in uh, Only Fools and Horses, the kind of humour and the way they riff off one another is something we'll be looking at. We might think about stage shows like Bottom with Rick Mayo and Aid Edmondson. Really difficult to use as teaching resources because Bottom Live is less censored, quite rude, they can get away with more. So I'll be taking really small snippets of that to show students how comedy would work in performance and how the comic actors would engage with an audience because Bottom Live is our best modern example of that. The kind of uh, cross-dressing and ridiculous humour as well is something that tends to come through British comedy. So in the future videos you can expect a lot of uh, clips from, say, Britbox and looking at, say, Bottom or Only Fools and Horses because it's just so much more effective than trying to explain why something's funny. Seeing it in action is really, really helpful. Okay, so I'm hoping you're going to join me for the rest of the videos in the series and you can see them theme by theme if you want to follow along with Frogs.